Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chris here, CG Aviator, back in the cockpit of the F-35B. And in this mission, we're going to do a typical military high to low level navigation from RAF Marham to RAF Valley via the Litchfield Radar Corridor. And this will be interesting to those people that love uh, military aviation and want to see behind the scenes at how we plan ahead and manage the sortie. Uh, but if you have the F-35 from Microsoft Flight Sim, this will be particularly good because I'll cover off a lot of systems. I use the VFR map, uh, we use the autopilot, GPS, ground-based navigations. And we'll also touch on descent rate calculations, level of entry considerations. We'll fly past the Snake Lake and the Mac Loop, and we'll end up with attack and approach to RF Valley. So there is a lot to go uh, on in this sortie. Use the chapters below to skip ahead if you wish, and I'll make sure I make the uh, route plan available to download from my website. So check out the description for any links or products that you see me using. So the key to success is planning and preparation. So what I'm going to do is set up everything I can do on the ground so that once I'm airborne, I have less clicking to do. So starting on the top right, I'm going to set Gcaster off for the low level so it doesn't alert me. Uh, I'm going to set my IFF to my squawk. We'll change that as we get airborne. I'm going to set my Joker to 4.0, my Bingo to 2.0 for no other reason than that just looks about right. Uh, I'm going to change my T-Flare page. So on these pages, they're all really customizable. So if I click on T-Flare, I change that to HUD. I can now cycle through HUD, uh, the information page, and the uh, thrust engine page, which is kind of useful. I'll do the same on here, but I like the FCS page for takeoff because it gives me the three greens and gear up indications. I'll give myself some weapons because it looks fun. And instead of the HUD, in the, the latest update, we get a map. So if we go to TSD1, then hit map, we now have a VFR overlay. And if we want that to be full length, we can click the down arrow to give us a, a bigger picture. And if I uh, zoom out, you can see it gives us uh, all the airfields, gives us the route that we're planning. Waypoint one is the um, radar cor corridor entry point. Uh, and I'll flash up a graphic of what the route is actually gonna be for you at some point. Uh, so that's the route, we've got the VFR route. We'll put the, um, there we go, we'll put the FCS back up there. On the uh, HSI, you can see that we have information. If I zoom in, in fact, let's not zoom in. Zoom in like that, there we go. Waypoint one is uh, as indicated, 280 at 60 miles. Once we get airborne, it'll show us the time to go, which we'll use later. And I'll set the first heading for the autopilot, 287, if we use the uh, heading control. And also the course bar doesn't automatically align to your GPS route. So I will set that on occasion to align up with the route that we're going to track. Uh, you can see I've already got 24 X-ray in, MAM is Marum, so we've got Takan as backup, and the blue needle will point to it as opposed to the green needle which will point to our waypoint, uh, which is really useful stuff. The CNTL button is also going to be used. If we cycle through, you can see top right, you can see that's VOR, and we'll set VOR to 1168. That's another thing I'm doing in advance because that's Shawbury, and we'll talk about Shawbury later, SWB. So go ahead and set uh, CNTL, that's Marum Takan. Uh, waypoint and the route. This is the route that we're going to be flying. So that is set up and good to go. As well as that, I'll set the autopilot up. So autopilot, we're going to go 140 for the Litchfield Corridor. That's set. We're going to go 550 knots, which is actually super cruise, but it just makes it go quicker. Uh, and we're going to go for altitude hold and route hold. And I've had a few anomalies happen with the autopilot, so hopefully that's going to work as advertised. So we'll use that once we get airborne. Uh, I've also got 2992 set, which I'll change to the uh, QNH, so 3019 or 1023 as the hectopascals. And I think we are there. Everything else I can do whilst we're flying. It is time to get airborne from runway 06 at RF Marum. Give me a dry power takeoff, so no reheat. I'm up to flight for 140 and turn left onto 289. The heading looks good, setting the power. Speed's about 100 is sufficient. Okay, speed is reading. Power's set. 150 knots, I'll rotate. Climbing. Gear up. We'll finesse the power because it tends to wander a little bit. The gear is up. I'll now put the map up on the display. I'll change. 2992 or 1013. Now we're indicating flight levels and we're clear off to the left. The weather looks decent and we'll go on our way. The climb, in fact, this time I use 350 knots, so about 20 degrees nose up holds about 350 with 100 set on the power.
Uh, Marum departures at this stage or pushes across to Swanick military frequencies, and Swanick is the controlling agency for the radar corridor, and they'll assign us a squawk, which I'll change in just a moment. I can probably do it quickly now. Here we go. So 4577, we'll change that to 6412. All right, going through 10,000 feet, climbing to 140. Here we go, autopilot, work for me. Well, a little bit twitchy. Okay, so it defaults to about a thousand foot rate of climb or descent, so that works. We're accelerating, but if I go auto throttle and speed hold, it'll engage the reheat, and you can see in the HUD we've commanded 550 knots and 140. And we are now supersonic. Nice. Not sure why we're slightly right wing low, but it's working, so I'm not going to touch it. So now airborne, we're now uh, comfortably leveling off, I think, at 14,000. Yep, it looks good. The speed is good. The altitude's good. The squawk is set. The altimeter's set. And I can run through any other checks that we need to do. But importantly, whenever you're flying a fast jet like this, is to think, when is my next event? What's happening next that I need to be prepared for? And when you've got a quiet minute, start working ahead and getting ahead of the game. So on the VFR map, you can see we're just uh, coming from the right-hand side to, in to intercept the uh, center line of our route. You can see the course deviation index is giving us that information. You can see the blue needle for Takan for Marum is uh, in our six o'clock, but we're not going to use that anymore. We'll cycle that forwards. And I'm very old school, so I like having the ground-based navigation to work with. So let's change. If we click on the... Uh, waypoint one route information up here we can go 048 on the TACAM and that is Coningsby so CGY is up the blue needle is pointing and if I zoom out takes a while to refresh sometimes uh, Echo Golf X-Ray Charlie is there which is Coningsby and once Marum is uh, kind of equidistant then Coningsby will be our, our preferred nearest from that point okay so that's going well uh, so what we're going to do is at waypoint one, that's going to be our entry point to the radar corridor. In fact, does that look like I'm now turning away from my center line? Let me just double check the autopilot. Astute hold, speed hold, route hold. I'm not sure why that's happening, but I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take off route hold. And I'll just position myself. Maybe re-engage it in a minute. Adapting and overcoming. Cool. On the lower left, you can see that we have waypoint one, 280 at 34 miles, three minutes. So we've already spoken to Swanick Military, and we've got three minutes to go until we get into the radar corridor. Now, the radar corridor is aligned nicely with Collingsby Takan, which is 48, so we could navigate through there without GPS, but of course, if you've got GPS, why wouldn't you use it? But this source of information, this two minutes 43, the countdown time at your next waypoint is invaluable for knowing how much time you've got so that you can work ahead. And just out of interest, just for fun, let's uh, into the fuel page. Let's put up the DAS so we can have a little top-down image of the ground. Not particularly useful, I guess, unless uh, somebody did mention that if you're hovering onto the ground, you can use this as a reference, which I thought was a, a neat idea. Uh, but I'll change that back to fuel. If you didn't want the fuel page, the fuel information is also top left. You can see gross weight 90, uh, correction 39.1, with a total of 5.3. And if you click on it, you get the fuel information on the left-hand side temporarily which is pretty useful. And of course, we have the same information about the waypoints in the HUD. So we've got waypoint one and the countdown. Now, throughout all sorties in an aircraft, in a fast jet especially, we should be doing lots of lookouts. So it should be looking across the horizon, looking above, looking to the front, checking the systems, and then we repeat that ad infinitum all the way through the sortie but if I did this all the way through the sortie <laughs> I think you'd get dizzy watching it so uh, that's why I'm not doing it so much right what I'm going to do now that we're 16 miles away from the waypoint I'm going to try and re-engage uh, the autopilot with root hold so let's take off autopilot and I'm recycling that because it's auto trim of course you don't actually need the autopilot in to stay steady because as long as the flight path marker's on the horizon it should be there or thereabouts um, but let's go back to root hole, autopilot engage. Uh, it's kind of aggressive, but it looks like it's correcting itself. Come on, you can do it. All right. Come on. 
level out. I'm hoping that any minute now it's going to do a rate one turn to intercept the next leg, which is 249. So what I'm going to do is set my course bar to 249. And you can see that the blue needle pointing to Coningsby is almost in the six o'clock. So we should be turning left soon. Oh, do I trust it? I don't know if I trust it. Still staring to waypoint one. So as soon as that trips over to waypoint two. Come on, baby. Come on, you can do it. Three miles to waypoint one. Waypoint two is now in. So we're now staring to waypoint two. I'm getting far too excited about this autopilot. It looks like it is doing the business. Righty ho. At this point, Swanwick Military will say radar control. And you can see just under the nose, if I zoom in, uh, there's East Midlands Airport. We've got Collingsby behind us, uh, but if I need to dive down for whatever reason, we can go to East Midlands. And the view is quite stunning. I'm always impressed by the visuals in Microsoft Flight Sim. All right, let's have a look. Waypoint wise, waypoint two is 41 miles away. That's three minutes and 40 seconds. After that, we leave the radar corridor. We start our descent down to low level. So waypoint three is my low level entry point. So you've got a couple of uh, options here. You can either fly all manually, like I said, with the auto trim, it's kind of easy. Or you can keep the autopilot in all the way to your low level entry point. So if you're a fan of that, you'll need to know how to configure it to get it to work. The so first off, we'll work out when we need to descend. So I'm going to use five degrees nose down as a common rule of thumb. And with five degrees nose down, if I get this right, you lose 500 feet for every mile you travel. So the other rule of thumb is you descend at twice your altitude or twice your height to lose. So if we say, to keeping it simple, that we want to descend down to zero feet and we're starting at 14 feet, at uh, 14,000. So 14 times two is 28. So if I descend at 28 miles with a five degrees nose down, I will reach zero feet within 28 miles. That's how that works out. But it's good technique to get down with a little bit of time to spare. And I'm going to do that at 420 knots. That's going to be my speed at low level. Ish. I may change it when we get there. So if I set the speed now, auto throttle speed or 20. There we go. Uh, that'll start slowing down. So the way we can work this for the descent is, uh, in fact, what was I saying? I was saying get back to what I was saying. I uh, said so 28 miles to get from where I am now down to low level. Cool. But I want at least a minute before my low level entry point so I can look out for the entry point, have contingencies, etc, uh, etc. Et so at 420 knots, that is seven miles a minute. So I'm going to add seven miles onto my 28, which gives me 35. So I have a final answer of 35 miles from waypoint three is when I'll start descending. That makes sense. I think it makes sense. If it doesn't put it in the comments and I'll happily explain it. Uh, cool. So if you want to use the autopilot, there is no way of telling it to go five degrees nose down, but you can tell it to do a vertical speed. So here's another rule of thumb. Hope you've got your notepads out. For every degree nose down you select, you will lose or gain, well, nose down, you will lose your Mach number in hundreds of feet. So 420 knots at this altitude is about point, uh, what's it, point 0.8 Mach. If I select one degrees nose down, that would be 800 feet a minute there or thereabouts. And I'm after five degrees. So 800 feet a minute times five is 4,000. So when it comes to descend, I will select my new altitude. And we'll talk about safety altitude in a minute. And I'll select it to 4,000 feet a minute and we'll see how close to five degrees nose down that, that, uh, that becomes. Make sense? I think so. Anyway. Uh, top of descent fuel, so we'll go through our Farrakis checks. Uh, so fuel is 4.3 with a joker of 4.0. It'll be just about sufficient for this sortie. Instruments, well, it's an F-35, so everything's fine. Radios, uh, talking and squawking. We're going to get rid of Swanick military in a minute. The altimeters, we'll set that when we start descending. Conditioning uh, is automatic from as far as I can see, as well as the anti-ice. And safety altitude is 3,500 feet. And I got that from the... Um, Swanick military page of the en route supplement and I'll put a link for those in the description below uh, so 3,500 feet but if I go further west into Wales it steps up to 5,400 feet so in essence I can see the ground so it shouldn't be a problem but if I couldn't see the ground then I could descend down to 3,500 feet AMSL 
level off, and then hopefully I'll emerge from the cloud. If that doesn't work, then I'll either have to follow the route but step up my altitude to uh, maintain a higher safety altitude, or if I know in advance it's going to be tricky, I may talk to Shawbury. I'm expecting a turn here with three miles from waypoint two. Oh, cute, look at that. Waypoint three is 42 miles away, and we said we're descending at 35. The VOR Shawbury, because we're closer, is now being picked up. It's 20 miles away, uh, bearing 305-ish. And if I looked at their min vectoring chart, I could accept vectors for them, uh, from them to get me to an area where they can descend me lower and then hopefully continue visually. That's another option available. Or if low level wasn't the mission and I can't get into low level, I'll just climb back up to altitude and then uh, go straight to Bali. A couple of options or three options for you there. OK, we're 38 miles. Let's start our descent now, or at least the process. So we'll get autopilot, altitude, start with a zero in this case, so zero, three, five. So that commands me a 3,000 feet rate of descent once it settles down. But you can see that's only about a three degree nose down. So if I go to uh, vertical speed and I'll go 4,000 like that and vertical speed hold, it'll deselect altitude, select vertical speed. You'll see vertical speed, it's difficult to read, shows uh, about 4,000 and we're just a gnat's whisker off a five degrees nose down. So it's a means to an end. So it looks like it's deselected the altitude hold, of course. Once we get closer to 3,500 feet, it will uh, start to level off and it will select altitude hold again. Lovely. So now we are on our way down to low level. The weather is looking pretty decent. When you're at altitude, it's always good to have a look into the area you'll be flying because you get lots of good SA on the weather. So it looks good. The cloud bases are reported to be higher than what we need, so it's not a problem. Uh, at low level, the plan is to fly at uh, 450. 50 knots I think uh, so I'll do that just to keep it a bit quicker and the first entry point will be Newton, a little town uh, just to the south and west of Welshpool because we don't need Coningsby anymore in fact what I should do in the descent I should have changed to the regional pressure setting so we've got uh, 1023 set and we can change our squawk I'll do it now to 7001 which is for low level in fact, like that, 7000 and 1 Lovely stuff. Uh, so we did our Farakis already. We can go on route from Swanwick. We don't need to talk to them anymore. Uh, I will still level off at 3,500 feet just to demonstrate, but uh, we'll carry on. Uh, and then we'd need to go through our VLAS checks. Well, those are the checks I used to do in the Hawk. So visor down, lights are all on, uh, altimeter set. We just done radios. We can talk to low level common. So low level common is really useful because the uh, military pilots, and I think sometimes civilians use them, but anyway, it's usually a UHF channel and you can tell people when you're approaching or departing well-known positions and hopefully they can update you if there's going to be a conflict. Uh, so radios, squawk and time because the United Kingdom's broken up into lots of LFAs, low flying areas, and we book it in specifically to make sure that we don't overload uh, LFAs and we've got awareness of who's booked in. So let's change our map scale down to 20. We should, if I have a look at the, uh, the autopilot, we've got altitude hold 3,500 feet. Happy days. Uh, weather, a little bit of precipitation, which I can't see through, but as long as I think it's five kilometers visibility, as long as we have at least that, then I can fly through it. If we don't, then already looking at our route, I can see to the left of that shower is clear, so we can always do that. And to the right, we can cut inside our route and just go directly that direction, as long as airspace wasn't an issue. There we go, a few different options there. Don't look outside, because the scenery around here is just delightful. The yellow fields, a bit of a rainbow, nice weather. Awesome. All right, what I'm going to do is take out autopilot. I could leave auto throttle in, but when I turn aggressively, it will... Uh, command reheat which I don't want it to do and now I'm flying it manually so how long have we got we've got eight miles to go and our entry point is of course just on the nose because we've been following autopilot and GPS so that's pretty easy incidentally if you want to fly this aircraft or this model at low level if you want to fly 420 knots it's about 40 on the power setting the power setting is uh, 
this one top left. If you want to fly 450, it's about 50 on the power setting. Okay, so the precipitation is clearing up, so I'm not so worried about that. I can see my entry point over there. We're not sticking to a time, so largely timing doesn't matter. Fuel we have 3.7, uh, which will be sufficient. The Joker has indicated, so you can see the Joker fuel has popped up, but it didn't give me a audible alert, so it's uh, one to be aware of. The bingo will. That'll be very obvious when we hit bingo. But there is Newton. At this stage, our nearest is still Shawbury, which is uh, behind us at 30 miles. As for navigating with a GPS route, you just put the thing on the thing and just follow it. Uh, the two things I'm looking at, if I put 10 mile scale, you can see the white line, you can just follow that. But in the HUD, you've got a little tick mark here, a little steering command. If you just follow that, uh, you won't go far wrong. Because following the white line, or what we uh, name the black line, because that's the uh, colour of pen we used to use on the paper maps, it's more important to be comfortable coming off the black line, but you have to start with a plan just so you know roughly where you are. And we'll do some of that uh, later. And ordinarily I change the course bar on every waypoint, but uh, it gets to be a bit much when I have to start clicking around a lot. So I'm just following the white line for now. We'll do a right turn at this town and I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. Here you go, this is our town. It's already gone to waypoint five, uh, which is one minute away. I think this is Snake Lake, and if it's not, please correct me in the comments. Let's go this way. Doing command in the herd, set the power, checking the dead wing. Lots of wind turbines over there, and Snake Lake. It looks a bit like a snake. Okay, the next waypoint, and I have selected waypoints for actual visual features. Again, the old habits die hard. If you follow in GPS, then not really necessary to see the waypoints. It's just good technique. Uh, it should be a small lake in between two spot heights, dropping away into lower lying ground. So I've got a couple of spot heights, I think. Obviously, we're following the GPS. Uh, and what I will set is the course of, I think it's 011. Here's our small puddle with a spot height there and kind of a spot height here. There to the right. Oh, I'm doing 500 knots. I could do this entire route supersonic, really. All right, here we go. Roll out, check the dead wing. We're now approaching the Mac loop from the south. The Mac loop is a flow arrow, which means that military aviators can only fly around it in one direction. Civilians can fly around it whatever direction, but <laughs> it would be spectacularly dangerous to fly the opposite way around uh, the Mac loop. But anyways, anything fast and pointy is going to come from the left. So as I approach here, we're on the east side of the Mac loop. The Cuntleth is down that way. I'm just scanning to make sure that nothing's coming. All right. It's cleared up here. The weather ahead looks good. We're going to take a left towards Bluebell. Then out the top of the Mac loop, we're going to head uh, right towards Lake Barla. I'm thinking ahead again. Uh, I can navigate around the map loop, I want to say with my eyes shut, but without a map, certainly. And even inbound, Lake Barla is easy enough. So I think it's 038, there or thereabouts. I'll set that for once I exit, and the rest of the time, I'm keeping my head out the window. I'm hoping to get a Toby eye tracker, which will allow you to see what I'm looking at because otherwise it just looks like my head straight forwards but I'm scanning all over the place whilst I'm flying. Of course my usual pitch I fly around the Mac loop a lot in the sim because I did it a lot when I was uh, flying for real in real life and I'll put a link for those videos in the usual places. Here's the exit. We're north side of the Mac loop now. We're going to take a right. This would be a perfect opportunity to go out on the low level common frequency and just say, uh, we're exiting north of the Mac loop, heading in Mount Bala, two minutes. So it's like Bala.
All right, quick check of the dead wing. Set the power, capture the speed again. At waypoint eight is the top of Lake Bala, which is in 10 miles, which is one minute and 20 seconds. And from there, we are northbound up towards Klandudno. Sorry about the pronunciation. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And the track, if I can click on the other screen, is 338. I'll set my course. 338. I'm scanning really quickly between looking out in front and then clicking the buttons. Right, 338, lovely stuff. Fuel is 2.9, bingo is 2.0. Uh, so in the spirit of thinking ahead, because navigation is easy, there's Lake Bala, we're heading left and the weather looks good. Let's set Valley Takan, so I'll click Route 1 up here. Uh, so it's 0, 2, 1. And that's saying a BYL, happy. A bit high here, let's get down. Looks like it's a windy day, that's for sure. Where I crash because I'm showboating outside. Alrighty. Get out, following the steering command, checking the dead wing, flying the aircraft, keeping it accurate. Waypoint 9 is in three minutes. Now I mentioned being off the black line. So the opportunities when they arise, such as flying down valleys, are always a good idea because a it's good practice b it's fun and c it makes good tactical sense because i know i'm in a stealth fighter but there may come a day where they have to hide behind the granite it's always good to uh tuck yourself down in the weeds i'm hoping my computer keeps up with me because a couple of times it just stutters but it seems to be doing all right So this valley that we're eventually going to join is going to go past uh, Betasy Coward. Oh, I'm terrible at names. Sorry, I know. Tell me in the comments. Uh, and up towards London, no. I could take the A5 pass, which is the usual exit for the Hawks and the uh, T6 aircraft based at Valley. They go A5 pass in direct to uh, direct to Valley. But we're going to go out the north as long as the weather's good, and then we'll cruise around. So now I'm thinking ahead towards exiting low level, even though I'm still flying this portion through the valley. So exit's gonna be climbing up to 3,000 feet or the base of the cloud, minus 500 feet. I'm gonna head left down the coast because that's easier, just head west and you'll come to Anglesey. And then we'll start setting up for the Takan approach. Still see through the rain, so it's all good. Visibility's fine. I don't want to say what that village is. Put in the comments, what village is that, if you know? We can go all the way up to Clendon now if we want, but because we've done our route, we're pretty much training complete, we could exit low level a little bit early. So we'll just press up here a little bit. I'm not going to set the course bar for the westerly heading. You can see it appearing on the VFR map. I'll just head in that direction. Ordinarily, if it was flat ground, I'd get the ATIS, start getting my uh, awareness up of what the uh, airfield weather is like, but my last report was good, and the weather looks good, and the granite's in the way, so I won't pick up any frequencies down here. And the beautiful thing about flying the F-35, or any aircraft that has a HUD with steering and GPS, is you can spend the majority of time with your head out the window. Let's exit low level. We'll do. If I want to get a uh, radar service, I'll keep 7001 uh, dialed in for the squawk, and then whoever I talk to knows that I'm probably the aircraft they're, uh, they're talking to. Awesome. That's London No down there. Nice. 
right, 450 knots. We'll keep the speed up just for brevity's sake. I'll make sure we've got the pressure settings set. For Rackies, we need to do that. In fact, undo our VLAR, so visor lights, altimeters, radio, squawk, and time. We need to do our Rackies by means of uh, recovery check. So fuel, we are, we total 2.3, so we're gonna hit bingo short final. In fact, <laughs> I practiced this yesterday and I hit bingo just prior to the final approach fix <laughs> and it messed me up. So I'm gonna set, the, you know what, I'm gonna set the bingo to 1.0. Just trust me that when it goes off, in fact, if I, there you go. That's what bingo looks like. Okay, now you've seen it. I'm going to set 1.0 so it doesn't go off when I'm trying to focus on flying. See, look, just playing with that, I've lost my speed. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'll make my uh, aircraft safe. We'll say we're talking to approach at this stage. Uh, we can, because we're taking vectors, they'll probably say uh, maintain 240 to say maintain 2,000 feet. Oh, here we go, stutters. change our CNTL to the TACAN and we'll set the course to what I think the final approach track is, 303. I'm not actually following the set procedures, just from what I know from memory. So what that's done now is because uh, TACAN is my primary nav source, my deviation bar, the white line that's offset from the white arrow, is showing me how far away from the TACAN centerline I am. And I've also been sneaky in the plan because waypoint 10, which you can see just up to the top right of the VFR map, is my final approach fix. So I know exactly where top of descent is on the GPS, which is cool. Weather looks good. Now we don't need the VFR map now, so we'll put the FCS page back up so we can see three greens. I'll start slowing down, ready to configure. The visuals around Anglesey in a sim, I mean, look at that. That's very impressive. Don't get distracted, Chris. Okay, right turn uh, heading 290 to maintain 1,500 feet. Safe for the tack and approach runway 31, or something to that nature. So that's what we'll do. Waypoint is now indicating in the HUD as. Uh, the TACAN, so 301 is the bearing to the TACAN, 9.4 miles versus 5.2 is our top of descent. And I can call established. At some point they'll report clear to land, and we're all good. Whilst I've got a minute, let's have a quick look outside again, because... It just looks brilliant. All right, let's not distract myself. Okay, we're 7.1 miles for 5.2. Let's put the gear down. Approach speed's gonna be about 140. I'll probably keep it a little bit fast because I find in this model, when I get uh, close to the ground, it locks up. It might do it again. If you had that problem with your uh, version of F-35, let me know, but it just seems weird. It's almost like the ground effect stops the, uh, the controls being effective. All right, 5.9 for 5.2. Not get slow. Point four. Just going to the tack end. Five point two. So this is going to be a nominal glide slope or a continuous descent final approach, as the Americans would call it. Which means that I'm going to keep a normal, as if I was flying an ILS. So I'm going to set three degrees nose low, anticipate my minimum descent altitude, which I think for a Cat D aircraft, if uh, if this is a Cat D, about four hundred and fifty feet. bumpy down here. We're now at 1,000 feet for 450. Wind is slightly from the right. You can see the runway is breaking out and that with three degrees nose low, I can just keep this glide path, oh, zoomed out a bit too far, and keep this glide path all the way down to the threshold, which is the, uh, which is the perfect, it's just comfortable. Uh, so we're now 600 feet for 450. My decision is to continue, so I've made the decision. I will now fly the aircraft onto the center line, control the speed a little bit better, and then hopefully the landing turns out all right. 
if you've watched so far, thank you for watching. Please consider smudging that like button if you enjoyed it. Even better, hit that subscribe button to help support the channel. It really does motivate me to keep these videos coming. Three goons, toes clear, clear to land, on speed. Here we go, don't lock up on me now. Might start to flare a little early. Oh, it's locked up. It just goes like treacle. We're down. Go on, until the next time. Take care and fly safe.